Right, so I'm finally going to get this car, or start getting it ready for paint. One thing that you might have noticed if you were super keen eyed, it's not a Prelude front bumper, it's actually an R34 front bumper. The other thing is, the bonnet is in terrible condition because I drove it into a guardrail and it was all bent and I sort of just bent it back out, which is also why it has a different front bumper on it. It's also got Series 2 headlights and this is a Series 1 4th gen. So I've got a, been out buying a few parts and stuff for it. So basically, I've got a red boot lid which has um, no holes for the spoiler because this is a factory spoiler boot lid and I prefer it without the spoiler. I've got Series 1 headlights which are um, a black inside so you can see there's a Series 2 headlight and there's a Series 1 headlight. This one's got a chrome piece inside it and I much prefer the black ones, they look a lot more aggressive. The police cars seem to exist in both versions. The other two parts I got, I got a new front bumper and I got a new bonnet. The only problem is the bonnet is all the way back there and then even less useful, the bumper is up there. So this will be interesting. It's always fun having to climb up there to get stuff down, but we'll head up there and see if we can get it. Okay, I just swapped the boot lid over. You don't really need to see me swap a boot lid, but um, I've just swapped the lock over. So obviously the key for this car works on this boot lid now, because if I forgot to do that, I wouldn't have been able to open the boot lid again. We're just going to start swapping over the front end stuff. The headlight alignment, like the actual panel gaps, are kind of bad, well on this side, because as you can see this is bent, and the bonnet was bent, and it's got the wrong bumper, because I crashed into a guardrail. So, once it has a proper bumper and bonnet on it, hopefully I can got something to reference to straighten this out and get the headlight sitting properly. Come on, Pretty much. Not cheap. Wow. It looks so nice now. Like a brand new car. It looks like a brand new car. It looks like a race car. It's got a black bonnet. Right, he's got my nice new bonnet. Time to say goodbye, Skyline Front. See how close this headlight is to fitting. I haven't checked the bulbs in these new headlights yet, which is pretty much a guarantee that when I put them in, one of them at least is going to have a blown globe. I'd say it's close enough. Looks good. Black headlights are in. It looks pretty mean with the black now, which is cool. See, it looks like that the bonnet closed. It's starting to look like a respectable car again. So this is the red bar we're going to chuck on. It's supposed to have like an indicator here and an indicator here. And I've got these, which are the original ones off this car. And they were just like tech screwed into the Skyline bumper when they're supposed to be like there on the Skyline. So I've got these two, which go... Yeah, so these are like the, the front ones and then there's a side one. I think I have the side ones in one of these boxes somewhere. In that box. This says lights on it. I hope. So that's a third gen indicator. That's a third gen indicator. Third gen parker. Third gen indicator. Third gen indicator. Third gen parker. Third gen indicator. Third gen indicator. Third gen indicator. Third gen parker. I was pretty sure I had 4th gen ones in here. No 4th gen indicators. Alright, so the indicators will just stay in with just the inside ones, so I'll have to track down a pair of the outside ones later. I also just noticed this car is supposed to have like a little vent that goes here and there, like its nose, and the vent's not on this bumper. And I also just went to put the bumper on and there's no Rio that actually holds the bumper, so I'm pretty sure all that stuff is attached to my original bumper, which is still up there, so... Let's go get it. Pretty dark. It is pretty dark. It's pretty dark and pretty awkward to get up the ladder. Well, I mean, the stock bumper's like all the way over the other side of the... All the way on the other side as well. I'm gonna fall through the expensive paint booth. Yeah. <laughs> Good news though. <laughs> <laughs> the um, 
The stock bumper has the Rio and the nostrils attached to it. This looks safe. Safety first. The funny thing is, this bumper is not in that bad a condition. I literally bought that red one so I didn't have to go to the effort of climbing up here to get this one down. Alright, so I got this bumper down. The reason I got a replacement one is one, so I don't have to get on top of the booth, and two, because this one has this hole in it. The hole is nowhere near as bad as I remember it being. So, actually, it's um, oh, it's just paint flaking off. Probably didn't need to buy another bumper, but it was like 20 bucks or something. But it's got the little vents that I need, and it's got the Rio underneath it, so swap all that bit, those bits over. So I just pulled the Rio off. Turns out the little vents are actually attached to the Rio, not the rest of the bumper, so that makes it easy. It's a bit bent from when I crashed it, but hopefully it fits straight on. Find out in a minute. It was cold when you were in the car. You were sorry? It was cold when you were in the car. The engine was cold. Right. Ah oh man, it does have to like... I'm pretty sure the bumper has to be attached to the rear when the rear goes on. I oh, know. Yeah, no, it's on. Wow, it looks like such a different car now. The black headlights definitely look cool, but... I'm not sure from that into 4th gen front. I don't know, the front lip looks cool. Yeah. The it's number plate holder just looks... Just I'm going to take that off and just put the number plate straight on the bumper. Yeah. But it also just occurred to me, because I'm painting it, I've got to take the lights and stuff out anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm going to take this all apart again, take the lights out, and then put the bumper back on. Normally, you'd paint the bumper separately for, like, a nice paint job. Because it's got to be two-tone, and the tone goes around the bumper, I've got to paint it all together to make it easier to match the lines up. So now that I've seen it all together, which is nice, it's coming apart again. Okay, so I'm back the next day. I've got to sand these off. they got some filler in them. There's also a few scrapes on the wheel arches on both sides of this car, so I've put some filler in that. I've got to sand those, but other than that, the only bodywork the car really needs, I couldn't find any other dents, but all the old clear, where it's all flaking, I'm going to go around with the compressed air and blow most of it off, and then I've got to sand the edges until these, like, sharp edges gone, so you can't see it after it's painted. But there is no shortage of this on this car. Just been blasting through this with the sandpaper, but Paul and Jen have come around with the S2000 that they painted in the last video. It's, like, partially through its getting polished and wet sanded back but yeah it's looking pretty cool now that it's all put back together and stuff. Steve's here as well now. We've got convertible club. Alright so I'm back here the next night. I'm just doing the last of the sanding. I just remembered that because it's two-tone the bottom half of the car is getting painted later so I don't have to prep, prep the bumper or anything yet because the two-tone line is pretty much the top of the wheel arches up so that makes my prep for tonight easier pretty much just sanded off all the clear all the flaking clear and then used scotch bright to get in around all the edges near the windows I'll just go one last sort of quick one over the whole quick go over the whole thing make sure I haven't lost anything uh, missed anything and then We'll put it in the booth, start wiping it down and masking it up. So we're just giving the car a quick wipe down with Prepsol or like wax and grease remover to remove any bits of dust that are left on it and any oil or anything from fingerprints and handprints. And then that's pretty much it. This is like the quickest way to do a paint job. Pretty much just sand what's there, sand out any little chips and stuff, body filler where it needs it, wipe it down, spray it. So we're almost done with the masking, just using tape and paper. Sean's struggling. No, it's good. <laughs> Don't look at it. Just don't look too closely. <laughs> and then it should be sweet. Super keen to see it painted in one colour again. So, this is another night that I'm here. I was actually ready to paint last night, and it turned out I accidentally bought two cans of black paint instead of one can of white paint, one can of black paint. So I went back to the shop today, got the white. It's very white. Should look cool, hopefully. But I'm just going to give the car a tack rag, like wipe with like a sticky cloth to get any dust that could have settled on it overnight. Then I'll go in and start spraying. So I've actually got enough paint here to do a second coat. I've decided to give it a rest because white is like really hard to paint. I knew it would be difficult. Wow, it's super hot in here. It's like 45 degrees in here. Um, the city yellow was hard to paint because the darker the color, the easier it is to see like the reflection of the paint and how thick it's going on. 
So the roof was easy to see, so the roof is like nice and glossy and stuff. You can see the scratches in it and stuff, that doesn't matter. But along the side, I was having so much trouble seeing what I was doing, so I did this by accident. <laughs> Full length of the door, run down one side. This guard's good, bonnet and stuff looks good. And then this guard here, another big run. And then another little one in the middle of the door. If I had one that size on the whole car, I'd just leave it because the other side's so bad. I've decided to not do the second coat. I'm going to let it dry, give it a day or two, sand the runs out. And the chances of me sanding it without sanding through the paint, because I've never actually tried to sand runs out before, is probably high. So I'll sand it and then give it another coat tomorrow, oh not tomorrow, like in two or three days. So if I do sand through, I'll have another coat to paint over it. So yeah. It's a bit lame, but just what happened. So I think I'm going to call this video for now. I'm going to start fixing the runs in the next video because I think this one's probably getting a bit long. I've never fixed runs before, so the next video might be either a how to fix runs or a how not to fix runs video, but we'll, we'll see when it comes out. Uh, don't forget I've got these stickers in my drift car on my store, which there's a link in the description for. So have over and have a look at those, and I'm actually going to have some new ones coming out soon, so keep an eye out for that. But other than that, I'll see you on the next video.